Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the preparatory ground instruction for exercise 29, emergencies. So just like a lot of the, or a, a few of the earlier PGIs that you learned, let's say preparation for flight, it doesn't all happen at once. And hopefully what your instructor is doing is going over a, a few emergencies every flight with you, maybe just one emergency, but you kind of cover a different one every flight. And, and by the time you have your private pilot license, you've kind of covered all of them. But this PGI, is uh, going to cover most of the emergencies that you might uh, encounter in, in a typical light aircraft. And we'll just work our way through a pilot operating handbook and, and talk about some generalities that apply to emergencies. So unfortunately, emergencies obviously happen. And when they do, you have to be prepared. So that is the, the motivation uh, the purpose of why we're covering this. To begin with, uh, let's talk about some general things uh, related to dealing with emergencies. So there's a little acronym uh, that I use, uh, been taught by other people uh, on successfully dealing with emergencies. So you, you kind of in reverse, F-E-D-C, so A, B, C, D, E, F, button in backwards. So F, fly the aircraft. So the first thing you're going to deal with dealing with any emergency is fly the aircraft. So that includes things like trimming for best glide speed or anything like that. After that, you are going to do the emergency checklist. So the important things that uh, will keep you alive, let's say shutting fuel off or uh, things like that. And uh, after that, you're going to, once you've dealt with the emergency, you're going to divert. So start thinking about where you're going to go fly, uh, where you're going to land. And then the last thing you're going to do is communicate. You're gonna communicate with air traffic control, communicate, let's say if you have passengers on board. And uh, this acronym will, will do you well uh, flying a Cessna 172, and it will do you well flying a jet aircraft. There's a few other ones actually B as well, uh, something called bullet points that show up in Boeing checklists and then a is set up the approach. Uh, so if you're IFR, that's the last thing you're going to do after you communicate is set up the approach for landing at your uh, alternate airport. And then uh, overarching, look, taking a look at all of these, uh, all of these emergencies, you'll you'll notice that if if it fails, shut it down. So that's the easiest thing to think about. If the engine catches fire, shut the engine down. If the electrical system catches fire, shut it down. And you'll notice that theme uh, continuing throughout this uh, throughout this lesson. Let's begin with uh, discussing an engine failure. Uh, the Cessna, this uh, material is taken from the uh, Cessna uh, Pilot Operating Handbook. So it tells you, uh, let's say the first thing, engine failure during a takeoff run. Now you don't necessarily need to memorize all of these things, but you do need to know the important things. So if the engine fails during the takeoff run, uh, it should be pretty obvious to you. It's, you know, it might not, fail completely but it's coughing and sputtering well you're going to reject the takeoff right and so you're going to know how do i reject a takeoff well you're going to bring the throttle to idle and you're going to apply the brakes okay and then it also tells you wing flaps retract and then basically shut down the engine mixture idle cut off ignition switch off if you have an engine failure after takeoff uh, you should know that the airspeed has to be 60 knots and then it tells you to shut the engine down Make sure it'll cut off, fuel off, ignition off, and then wing flaps is required and master switch off. So the way to think of this is you're aiming for your best glide speed, 60 knots, and shut the engine down. And then if you have an engine failure in flight, this is kind of further towards when we we're discussing the forced approaches. Kind of the same thing. So the airspeed is 60 knots, your best glide, and your uh, carburetor heat is on. Now what Cessna has you do is essentially do the cause check, primer, fuel, mixture, and ignition. Uh, but the way we teach forced approaches is uh, prior to doing those things, we're gonna look for a field and plan for the approach because there's a good chance we still might be landing there anyway. We can always do this later, but we don't wanna waste valuable altitude. This is a really important uh, subject, engine fires, and especially when we uh, start talking about engine fires during start on the ground, because this is actually probably the most common emergency that you may face uh, as a pilot, as a, a pilot flying piston aircraft, especially if you fly somewhere where it's cold. So what happens is you get in this airplane, this airplane's cold, maybe you didn't preheat it enough, maybe you're just flying an airplane like a Cessna 150 that doesn't like starting in the wintertime, and you prime the aircraft, and then you go to start it, and it doesn't start. So what do you do? Well, you keep 
unfortunately, most people would just be like, oh, I'm just going to keep priming it. So they keep priming it. Before they know it, they've flooded the carburetor. There's fuel all over the place. There's fuel um, on uh, on the on the wheel, let's say, the nose gear. Uh, there's all sorts of fuel, right? And then you go to uh, start and you're cranking and you're cranking. And then all of a sudden there's some spark or something. And that spark ignites that fuel. And that fuel is also on the tire and pretty soon. And, and there might be a puddle of fuel on the ground. So now you have a fire. So what do you do? And so this is the most important thing. The most important thing is that you continue cranking. Okay, you want to crank and you want to try to suck as much of that fuel into that engine. Uh, if the engine starts, uh, you want to power up 1700 RPM for a few minutes. And then after that, you're obviously going to shut down and inspect for damage. If the engine doesn't start, you're just going to continue cranking for two and three minutes. If you if that happens to, to wear out your starter motor, too bad. But at least you're you're trying to suck everything in. Grab your fire extinguisher. Do you have one? Okay. And uh, and then secure your engine. So master switch ignition and fuel shut off and then use your fire extinguisher. The other thing, uh, somebody told me one time, they, this happened to them and this isn't covered in the checklist, but it's a, a really good idea. They said, after the engine starts, taxi forward, just go like 15, 20 feet forward because there's a, a chance that there's a puddle of fuel on the ground that's on fire. And if that's on fire, you want to taxi away from that fire as opposed to having it uh, burn your tire so i thought that was kind of an interesting thing and it's it's kind of a little tidbit of information that i i like passing on to my students in flight if you have an engine fire the usual cause for this is uh, that there's something loose uh, let's just say a uh, fuel line fitting or so it's loose let's say it's dripping on the exhaust and and catches fire so if you do have a fire in flight it, it's going to be very dramatic uh, but you're going to shut your engine down. Make sure it'll cut off, fuel off, and then master switch off. Then it also t has you uh, uh, put the cabin heat and air off so that you're not getting any uh, smoke into the cabin. And then it tells you to increase your airspeed to 85 knots. Uh, and hopefully what it will do is kind of blow out the the fire. Now it's interesting kind of the, the chemistry, the stoichiometry behind this. You're actually not blowing out the fire technically, but what you're trying to do is make that fire so lean, so you have so much air uh, that that it, the gasoline does just not combustible anymore because there's too much air uh, in that in that mixture. And then obviously you have a forced approach that you have to deal with uh, that we discussed earlier in, in exercise 22. Now you will notice uh, as we go through these, and I'll, I'll throw this out there. Generally, the the pattern that you will find for dealing with emergencies if something fails or something catches fire shut it off and that will go from anything as simple as a Cessna 150 with an engine fire to let's say a, a a bleed overheat a bleed air overheat for the air conditioning system and like a 737 if, if it fails or it catches fire just shut it down and so you'll you'll notice that pattern as we continue through uh, these pgis or these um, emergencies fortunately we can have uh, electrical fires in flight and so, like I mentioned just earlier, if you have a if a system fails or catches fire, you shut it off. So, an engine fire in electrical fire in flight, shut the master switch off. So that's going to kill all your electrical power, and then shut off all your other switches except obviously the ignition. You want the engine to keep running, and if you need to, you can activate your fire extinguisher. Now, there might be a chance that you need. Um, a radio or you need a piece of electrical equipment to continue, safely continue the flight. Let's just say your IMC and in instrument meteorological conditions and you need a GPS to get somewhere. Okay, so for most VFR, I would just leave everything shut off. Don't, don't go turning things back on again uh, at the risk that they're going to, to catch uh, fire. Uh, but sometimes you might need one. So then what you do, you do remember you have all, you've had all your electrics off, is you're going to turn your master switch on you're going to check your circuit breakers and not, and, and maybe there's a blown one, but don't reset it because that's the reason you may have had your electrical fire. And then you're going to slowly turn your electrical switches on one at a time and only what you need. So let's say your IMC, it's going to be, let's say your GPS, a radio, and maybe your pitot heat. That might be it. Okay. And then it also tells you to 
do your cabin vents uh, open? So this electrical fire is something you might actually have a lot of time with. And so it's important that you remain somewhat organized. So obviously some things are absolutely critical. You do right away. So you're going to shut off your master switch. Once you have things under control, what you can do is reach down and now you can grab your emergency checklist. And now it's time that you actually uh, go through and, and look at this. Cargo fires uh, or cabin fires scare me the most because often they are things that catch fire that are not easy to extinguish. So if you have an engine fire, well, the engine fire is usually gasoline on fire. You can shut the gasoline off. If you have an electrical fire, it's often, uh, well, obviously an electrical source. So you can shut that off. But a cabin fire, uh, that might be really bad. Now, how things in the cabin catch fire, it's pretty rare but it does still scare me a lot. But it tells you, uh, turn your master switch off, uh, close your vents and heat to avoid drafts and activate your fire extinguisher. The one thing that I've always wondered, like if this happened to me, and, and you can think about it and you can talk about it with your instructor, and I don't, I don't have a solid answer for this, but these checklists tell you to, to shut the vents off and activate your fire extinguisher. But I would think that if I had a fire, it'd be pretty smoky in the, uh, in the cabin. And if I, um, if I'm, if I'm doing that, like if it's that smoky, I, I might have to breathe somehow. So thankfully there's a warning and it says after you discharge the, the fire extinguisher, you can ventilate the cabin. But if you didn't have a, a fire extinguisher, I don't know, I'd be, I'd probably have a window open. I'd be trying to breathe or something like that, but either way, it's not going to be a good uh, situation to be in, but it's just, it's something to think about. Obviously you're going to land the aircraft as soon as possible. Let's talk about some electrical failures. You can have an over voltage light. So remember an alternator has a voltage regulator. The alternator actually puts out like 18 volts or something like that. And the voltage regulator brings it down to 14 or 15 volts in order to, uh, to charge the battery. So if you have an over voltage light, it's a little red light you'll see in a Cessna 150, 172. So you're gonna shut off uh, the master switch. Then you're gonna turn the master switch on again. So basically it resets uh, that system and then hopefully the over voltage light is off. If it comes on again, well, just terminate the flight as soon as practical. If the ammeter shows a discharge, uh, turn the alternator off. So the one side of the uh, master switch, that's the alternator. Just shut that off, shut off non-essential electrical uh, equipment and terminate the flight as soon as practi uh, practical. So what this means is that the, the airplane's just uh, running off the battery. Obviously, if you're IMC in cloud, this is a much bigger deal than if you're VFR. But Regardless, uh, you will run out of electrical power and, and have to deal with that. This could come into a much bigger deal too if you are in a retractable gear airplane with an electric uh, landing gear system. Uh, that needs a lot of electrical power and it's, that would be super important that you, um, that you still had some battery juice left to, in order to uh, lower the gear or uh, let's say the flaps. So on your flight test, you're going to be expected to uh, deal with two simulated emergencies and the examiner can give you pretty much any emergency that is in the pilot operating handbook or anything else that they kind of come up with uh, themselves, a cabin fire, car icing, things like that. And you will be expected to do the important things, the vital actions we call them by memory and then follow up by consulting the appropriate checklist. So as we said, kind of in the first slide, uh, don't forget your acronym, your F-E-D-C. So fly the aircraft first, then do your emergency checklist. After that, you divert where you need to go and then communicate with air traffic control. So in summary, uh, remember, if it fails, shut it down. Thanks a lot for joining me on uh, this uh, PGI. I hope that you will never ever have to use the material that I just taught you. Uh, but if you did, hopefully it sticks in your mind and uh, you deal with it uh, effectively. Thanks for joining me.